everyone. Welcome to the part one of WBN I Am Power workshop series. This is our first webinar series entitling Developing Content Strategy for Digital Marketing under the WIF Business Woman Network. Now, popularly known as WBN and is one of our initiative under WIEF foundations. Now, WIEF main objective is to empower women in the economic field through its business programs and workshops. To know more about WBN, kindly visit our website at wbn.wief.org and Facebook at WIEF Business Woman Network. Now, let me introduce the trainer for today's workshop. She is the CEO and founder of ATEC International, a digital marketing firm in Malaysia specializing in professional development and digital marketing. Uh, her varied experience include strategic planning, digital marketing, market expansion strategies, and market intelligence. She's traveled far and wide and as a speaker, trainer, and consultant for multiple organizations such as hotels, banks, and as well as the oil and gas. Without further ado, please welcome Ms. Angeline and Samuel. Thank you, Ina, for the introduction. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad that you're, you're able to make it today for our developing content strategy training. Um, so I'm actually going to start off with the slides. So what we're gonna actually cover today is mainly about the content is king, what content marketing is about, uh, layers of content, what content can do for you and the importance of having a good content, current trends in content marketing and content ideas. So we're gonna be able to go through what are the content ideas that are uh, out there and what is the trends that are actually currently uh, for 2020, right? So let's start off with what is content marketing. So digital content marketing isn't new. It's been around a very long time. In fact, we've used it uh, previously on the traditional marketing. We'd probably say we use it for brochures, flyers, websites, billboards. And currently what we are doing is uh, on a more strategic plan, integrated and customer oriented way. So that's the only difference that's happening uh, right now in terms of content marketing. And what we want to do is actually find the sweet spot between the uh, content marketing right now is go the goals, meeting your goals, the intent of your marketing, the preference of your audience, what kind of audience uh, and what are the narrative you want to build for your audience uh, as well as what information out there about your organization or business that you actually want to provide to your audience. Now, uh, so this is what I'm going to share with you is uh, why content marketing. Why content marketing is so useful. So what you need to bear in mind is every day we have customers who's going to search on uh, the webs on Google, for example. They're going to actually search your product and your services. So for example, what they're going to do is they're going to type out a product and then you're going to start off and they're going to see multiple different websites and different contents all over the uh, Google. What you need is that you need to be on the first page of Google. There will be at least 10 lists in a page and make you choose the best, right? So the content, it's the content that make you compare whether it's a good service or a bad service or whether it's a good product or not. So you definitely want to actually showcase your content everywhere possible. So we will be coming to the channels as well. What channel can you, what channel can you use your content to be in, all right? Now, you want to be smart in terms of content development. You want to optimize your content. You want to make sure it has a good return in terms of traffic to your website. Okay. So uh, one thing you want to do is make sure that all your questions regarding your uh, company, about your products, your services, and your search sites are everywhere possible in all various types of uh, channels available. Okay. So these are the layers of content. Now, this is where it gets interesting. You can actually see there's the mystery part, the sensuality, the intimacy. Now, whenever we talk about content, I don't want you to think of it as a very uh, business corporate standpoint of view. I want you to think about uh, the passion that you have for your business or your industry or 
what is it that you really love about your industry? Bear that in mind, and then we will actually move into the layers of content. You want to understand the mystery of it. So in terms of mystery, what do I mean by mystery is that you want to showcase the great stories that you have on your about your company, about yourself as the uh, CEO, as the managing director, as the creator, as the founder of your company. What's the past of your company? How did you develop? Uh, what made you to create the company that you have today? The present, what are you currently doing? Uh, how are you developing? Where are you heading towards in terms of the future? What are your goals? How far, what do you see in the next 10 years or five years from now? And you also want to tap into your customers or users or uh, your clients' dreams. What is it that they expect from you? Where do they see themselves? You want to keep that in mind when you're developing content. You want to use myth and icons, icons in terms of celebrity, perhaps. Um, you know, the influencers or either you yourself that is going to be the uh, influence of your own company. And you also want to tap in inspiration. So how can you inspire people? So this is in terms of how you can delay of using mystery to actually gain uh, more customer clients in your, uh, to be able to see your content and get to know about your business. Now let's move on to sensuality. What do I mean by sen sensuality is using your senses. You want to be able to maximize all the senses when people are dealing with your business site, are able to see your business. How can you actually showcase your product? Um, sound, probably you want to have a video with sound, you actually having um, the CEO talk about it or the market leaders talk about your product or services, smell, if you're able to actually portray smell or touch or taste, this all come under sensuality. The more you're able to uh, use all the senses, the more easier for you to convince them to actually be your customer. And next we have intimacy. Intimacy in terms of commitment, empathy, passion. Now, what do I mean by commitment, empathy, passion? I want you to think of advertisements that you look in the TV or hear in the radio, or you see advertisements on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, and you actually have videos that are, you're looking into a family. Um, you know, they are going for a road trip perhaps, or you're looking at a family dinner or a family having a fun time out, or perhaps they are, you're looking at, uh, uh, for example, if you're looking into an insurance agency advertisement, what would it be? Perhaps a family is uh, taken care of and if they are hurt, they're in the hospital. So that's what I mean by intimacy, uh, commitment, empathy, and passion. You're actually giving uh, everyone the chance to look at yourself from a different perspective. You're actually uh, going towards a family perspective or something relate they are able to relate to and feel, right? So that's in terms of mystery, sensuality, and intimacy. We will come to that further details. What kind of content can you create to actually touch base with mystery, sensuality, and intimacy, right? Now, what content can do for you? Why is it so important to create content? What exactly can content do for you? So first thing, it can increase your traffic and you definitely want to increase your traffic to be able to sell more products and services. Generate more leads attract customers. You want to attract customers. You want to attract potential customers as well. Goodwill to the company. Content used in social media attracts more customers through social media can have direct communication with customers. So you're able to reply. Say, for example, you have a customer who's asking you a question on Facebook, uh, Instagram, or YouTube in the comment session, or either they're personally messaging you. You are able to reply to their comment or either their private messages. So it's very useful to actually uh, be able to get in touch with the customer. They're able to know your company. They're able to get to know your services. So you always want to bear in mind in terms of um, content with social media. What are the advantages? This is one of the advantages. You're able to improve your brand reputation. You get to have your brand everywhere in all types of uh, social media channel, on your website, on any other media uh, as much as possible. So it's so important to play around with the content. You're able to attract new audiences by people sharing them. Um, you know, someone, some people actually WhatsApp the videos. They, um, they're able to share it on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And that is what you actually really want for your brand. You're able to improve your sales with people. You 
with increasing your traffic, getting more leads and attracting more customers, you're able to improve on your sales. You'll be able to get your return in investment of time that you've spent in creating the content. All right. Next up is people expect good content to meet the expectations. So we will actually come into that topic shortly. Right. So this is something that I want you to remember in terms of content. The essential difference between emotion and reason is that emotion leads to action while reason leads to conclusion. So every time you're going to develop a content, I want you to bear in mind that it's so important to get in uh, touch with your emotion rather than just the logical point of view because people actually take action when they're able to connect with your product or services in terms of the emotion and more than in terms of reasoning. Yeah. Now, content marketing revolves around experiences. What are the experiences that it revolves around? Customer experience, brand experience, uh, and as well as user experience. So that is something that you want to, what are these experiences? So for example, customer experience, you can, um, depending on your business nature, your customer experience could be, they are going through your e-commerce site and how they feel buying your products and services online. Or perhaps they're walking into your store. What is the experience they're having? Maybe the store looks absolutely beautiful. Customer service is great. Um, you know, they get to know more about your products with speaking to the salesperson. That's all customer experience. Then brand experience. Brand experience is being able to remember the brand. They're able to, uh, what you can do is content relating to stuff like, uh, Who's behind the scenes? Who's the owner of the company? What your brand stands for? What is it that you want to achieve in selling your, your product or services? How can they help the community of people around them? And in terms of user experience, you're able to talk about the using the product, the testimonials. Uh, those are all the user experiences that you can use as content. Now, Content marketing key goals. Now, we have a variety of goals, but you want to bear in mind, your goals may not just fall into these six categories. It might be something totally different. So if you do have goals that are completely different from uh, this six category, you would want to write that down and keep that in mind always whenever you're creating your content. So you want to remember brand awareness is one. One of the content, uh, the key goals that you want to achieve in terms of content marketing is brand awareness lead generation, engagement, sales, customer retention and loyalty, upselling and cross-selling, right? So these are the six main goals that most companies would cover. However, if you do have any unique goals, you want to write that down as well. Whenever, to bear in mind that whenever you're creating the, uh, your content, you want to always be aware which target is it falling under? Which goal is it falling under? Is your content today falling under brand awareness? Or you're trying to get lead generation? Are you create, trying to create engagement to have people to share, to comment, to like? Are you trying to create sales? Are you selling a product? Do you want them to click and buy or do you want them to go into an e-commerce website? Customer retention and loyalty. Do you want them to be your loyal customer? Do you want, to, uh, want them to actually, um, you're able to sell multiple different products at the same time? Those are customer retention and loyalty. Upselling and cross-selling. Perhaps you want to sell a different product at the same time. Or maybe you want them to buy uh, extra services that is upselling and cross-selling. So you want to bear in mind what are the goals you want to achieve when creating a content. Because each content can fall into a different category. So whether it's brand awareness, lead generation, engagement, sales, customer retention and loyalty, upselling and cross-selling. Which category does your content fall under? Right? Now, content marketing has uh, a few var variation of channels and platforms that you can use. So there's four different types of content marketing. So it can be owned, earned, shared, and paid. Owned, uh, things like website, blog, social media, um, maybe your Facebook, company Facebook account, Instagram account, YouTube account, um, and various, I mean, Twitter, this variation of different kinds of social media you can use, and those are all owned content that you're going to create and post it on your own. There's earned, which is essentially where others talk about you. So this also falls to the category of social media, as well as shared, community-driven platforms and content. So it could be groups that you've created, pages that you've created, all these goes under shared 
um, platform. And paid media, this is where you have YouTube advertisements, Facebook advertisements, Instagram advertisements, Google ads, these are all paid media. Now, this is where you want to fall under. So you can see this graph where high rust pack, low rust pack, low love, and high love. So in terms of, as you can see here, most products and products and services fall under low rust pack and low love. Now, you want to build it towards, if most brands, as you see, famous brands, they have low and love, but very high rust pack. So many people tend to still buy them. But where you want to be is the sweet spot right here where you can actually see where you want to be is where there's high love and high respect. You want to be a product and service that's loved and respected. How do you do that? Everything is about how, what kind of content you create. You want to showcase your passion, the love about pro your product. How can your product benefit them? So we will definitely touch on content a little bit shortly. Right? So let's start about content. You start with an idea, right? And then you move on to your content is king, which is multiple uses of the same content. So for example, you create a content on for Facebook and then you're able to use it on Instagram. You're able to use it on YouTube, on, on Twitter. How do you use the multiple different content on a different level is actually by changing maybe with the same concept, but changing the graphics, the background, the images. Maybe instead of making it an image, you can make it a video. Uh, you can have a YouTube video, perhaps. So, but it's all the same content, right? So you want to keep that in mind. You also want to repurpose it for maximum effectiveness. That's why I told you that you can actually use it for, um, for example, you're creating an uh, image currently. What you can do is change it up and talk about it, perhaps. You can actually make a full video. Why should you purchase your product? How is it going to benefit them? Um, how else can they use them? Perhaps you want to give them a different idea of that particular product. What else can you do? A DIY with a product or services. So that is repurposing it for maximum effectiveness. You want to add your experiences as well. So how, when you actually use the product or services, what do you feel about it? How do you think? What do you, you get out of it? Tell your story. Why, do you why did you create the product? What is it for? Um, how did you build your company? You can talk about your employees. You can talk about the company, about the customer, about the consumer, about the current trends, what's happening to the world, the current news. Tell stories to people. The more you tell them stories, the more they will actually listen to you, the more they'll be interested in you. Make it relevant to them. Who are you? Why should they care about your product? Why should they care about your company? Why should they buy from you? How can you help them? What can you do for them? So you want to make sure that they understand that you're not just a company that's selling, selling, selling the products constantly. So there is a formula to it where I would share with you shortly. Now, how do we develop content? Now, this is where we're going to spend a little bit of time in um, different variation of content ideas. So for example, if you would like to be more corporate, these are the content ideas that you can have. Can you actually showcase your employee profiles, the behind the scenes, the making of your product? You can have it in images, in videos. Uh, what is your um, the favorite employee of the week, the favorite employee of the month? Popular products. What kind of products and services that you think is popular at that point of time? How can it actually be effective to people? Employee, um, the popular products, you can showcase things like um, what don't showcase every single product at one point. Pick a product, go as niche as possible, as detailed as possible. Showcase to them how can they use it, how can they, why should they buy it from you, what is, why should they be in love with the product? Every time, remember the word love. You want to make them fall in love with something. You want to make them fall in love with the product, your services, um, the activities that you're doing. You want them to have empathy. You want them to have passion. You want them to follow you. So with that, the whole idea of falling in love with your product or services, falling in love with your company, no one's actually going to follow your content. No one's actually going to buy it. So you would want to sell dreams. You want to sell passion. You want to sell the love of it. Why should they buy it? You want to showcase as much as possible. Why are you so passionate about buying? Why should they buy from you? Right? 
you want to also give them an extra um, education on the terms of favorite tools you use. You, it doesn't always have to be about your products, about your services, about your company. You can talk about the favorite tools you use in um, perhaps creating content, favorite tools you use to actually manage your staff, favorite tools you use to um, perhaps to actually use your services, to enhance the product and services. And you can talk about your year-end roundup, your anniversary sales. You can showcase your product reviews in terms of testimonial in videos. In um, Videos is the most effective way to actually showcase testimonials. You can actually showcase your uh, testimonials on paper, on image, um, write-ups about your company. Next thing you can do is insider tips and tricks you definitely want to showcase as much tips and tricks so they know that you value them. You want to actually show them that you care and that is something that will make them feel connected to you. So give them as much tips and tricks as possible as you can. How to post and tutorials, all right? So how to, uh, for example, tutorials of your services, what kind of services you have and DIYs style guides, uh, recipe of your favorite food, perhaps the local eateries in your area or in your country. What is the favorite food for your employees of that month? Those are things that people would actually want to see. They want to read. They want to be in touch with you in an emotional way, more than just logical way. So you want to definitely go towards the passion, the love, the human side of people. The more connected you are from the human perspective, the more you actually will be able to generate sales, regardless of what industry you're from. So even if you are from a very industrial base, so even if you sell oil and gas, you sell very, various different kinds of things that are not even you feel that it's not really going to touch the human perspective, you definitely will be able to create content, that make them feel emotional, will make them feel that, that you understand them, that you care, that you feel. So you definitely want to go towards the emotion part of content development because that's where humans are. Humans are not robotic creatures where they actually only want to see the logical part, the statistics of it. Why should they buy it? They make a lot of judgment according to the emotions. So you definitely want to cater to that. All right. So the next thing you want to bear in mind is um, you can actually share classes, you can share seminars, tutorials, um, FAQ, post and answers, search query, blog post. And you also can tell them a story of uh, your case study. You can showcase your case study, your law story, the, the creation of your company. And the how else could you actually showcase a story would actually be in how did you start your company, your employees, what's the behind the scenes of your company, the full scale of the production, what's the behind the production, what's behind the uh, services that you provide, All right? The next thing you want to do is solve a problem. Uh, perhaps you can actually do a vlog or a blog of the recent challenges and solutions that you have, right? And you also have You also have the uh, must-have things. So what can you create in a must-have is, for example, must-have things for traveling, must-have things for, must-have, a list of must-have things to actually have in your office. So you can create very variation of different things. Sometimes you can actually just have something unrelated, completely unrelated to your, your business, but you can actually show them that you care by creating content that will be able to help your consumers. So you wanna bear in mind, who are your consumers? We will come to that topic in the buyer persona. Is actually learning about the demographics of your business, right? Next thing you want to do is sales and promotion. So uh, here's the deal with sales and promotion. You have to keep in mind that when it comes to content, whether it's in social media, uh, mainly in social media, you want to bear in mind uh, the formula of making sure that people fall in love with your business, fall in love with your industry, fall in love with the service you're selling, the ideas that you're selling. One thing you always want to keep in mind is the 80-20. 20% of the time you want to talk about the discounts, the products with the services, about your company, but 80% of the time you actually want to talk about things that will actually help them. 
bring value to them, bring education, uh, provide education to them. They're able to learn something. They are able to get something out of it. So 80% of the time, it's supposed to be lifestyle oriented um, about making them like your product, like your services, uh, totally fall in love with your brand in a whole different way that has nothing to do with your services or products. You want to encourage them. You want to give them inspiration. You want to be able to sell a dream to them. So 80% of the time, it's all about the content that has nothing to do with discounts, nothing to do with sales, nothing to do with services, and nothing to do with your products. So bear in mind, 20% of your content can only be about your business in terms of product, services, discounts, sales, and 80% of the time, it's supposed to be something that's bringing them education, bringing them value, um, making them fall in love with your product and services. Great. And next thing you want to do is create contests, speaking events, um, push, sorry, professional awards. You want to showcase your professional awards. What have you won? You can actually have newsworthy events, uh, your press conferences, loyalty and referral programs, company news and announcements. You also can talk about customer feedback. That's why I told you about the testimonials, videos, images. You want to showcase that as well. Feature an employee of the month, like I've mentioned earlier, product reviews um, and vacation posts. Perhaps one of your staff have gone for some interesting vacation. You can also just post it up as a content. Right? You don't always have to be truly business because when it comes to social media, um, uh, currently, in terms of content marketing and social media, it's barely about anything related to um, anything related to business most of the time. People fall in love with you because you're able to sell a dream. You're able to educate them. They want to learn something from you. They want to be entertained. So if you can actually entertain them, showcase a lifestyle, sell a dream, you'll be able to get their business because then they would be interested to know what is your product, what is your service. So Keep into the 80-20 module and you would actually be perfectly fine. Right? So now, how do we build brand awareness? Now, one thing, of course, with content marketing is you want to build brand awareness and trust. When people are sharing your knowledge and content, it creates a brand awareness. It gives the feeling that your brand knows what it's talking about and can be trusted. So you want to always bear in mind brand awareness. How to build brand awareness, right? Next thing is you want to bring in new leads, right? When people are searching for products or services on the internet, content marketing can help your business appear in those searches, okay? You can, what you can do is actually create an ebook, PDFs, um, give out ideas, give out tips. You're able to get more leads when they download, you're able to ask them their phone number, their email address, um, even their name their contact details. So if they can fill up the form, what they will have something to get in return is eBooks, PDFs. That actually works a lot in letting lead generations, yeah? All right, next you wanna showcase your expertise. You want to be known as the thought leader in your industry. Content marketing allows you to position your brand as one of the, that is knowledgeable about your product, about your services, and you wanna be at the top of your industry. The moment they think of your industry, they should think about you, okay? So you wanna be an innovative thought leader. And one thing you can do is all about planning your content right. Okay. Educate your audience, right? So content marketing should educate your target audience and provide them with value, okay? Audience will look to your brand for more than just product or services. This is why I told you that audience don't really, really give too much attention to just your product and services. When it comes to social media, when you're looking at social media, I want you to think of yourself. You are not actually looking at products and services when you're scrolling on uh, social media. If you're actually taking your phone out and you are actually going through your social media, you're looking through at your Facebook, you're looking through your Twitter, your Instagram and YouTube, would you be happy? Would you be excited if all you see is products, 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 products? I'm sure we will all get tired. It, it feels very commercialized. It's super commercial and we will get tired. We get bored and eventually we won't even look at social media if actually that's how it looks like, right? So you want to always develop a whole different style of marketing. You want to be able to educate your audience. You want to create value. You want to show them something they can dream of. Always think of uh, 
always think of what they will be able to think of. What can they achieve? How can they, what would you want to see on social media? Most of the time, what we want to see is a lifestyle. We want to sell, we want to see a dream to be able to achieve a dream. How far can we go? What can we do? What are other people's life like? What would people's life be like? What would your audiences or target audience or either your client or customer's life be like if they actually buy your product or services? Would your product or services actually give them a better life? Would it be different? Would they get something extra? Would they win something over? Um, showcase that. Showcase what would happen when they buy your services and products. Why should they buy it? Tell a story. People fall in love with stories every time. Storytelling is the best way to actually create content. So showcase your passion, showcase your love by telling a story. Every time you can create a content, look at the content and ask yourself, is, does, is this content telling a story? Does it show empathy, love, passion, education, value? Does it fall under any of these categories? If it doesn't, that's not a content that you want to actually put up on social media. So think of what content you're selling before you actually put it up on social media. And let's move on. Now, this is what I would actually like you to think about when you're creating content. Now, in content, we have value, trust, empowerment, hope, community, and results. Now, every single one of your users, your target audience, what they're always looking for is these six items, value, trust, empowerment, hope, community, and results. If any of your content can fall under this category, you will definitely have a new customer. So value, what value do you bring to the table? Trust, why should they trust you? How can they trust you? Empowerment, with your product and services, how can you empower them? Or perhaps you don't even have to talk about your product and services. You can actually empower with different kinds of content. Um, hope, what hope can you bring in your content? Are you bringing hope? Community. How can you create a community? How can you create a community where in, if you actually have a business page where everyone comes in and talk about your products, talk about your services, ask you questions, you have developed a community. You are actually a very successful uh, content developer. If you are able to get a community to be in your business page, it works like a group. If you can actually make your business page act like a group where you're able to educate them, you bring value to them, you have people questioning, answering, you create engagement, you create an engaging content, you're able to have a various different type of, types of content, you will create a community. And that's definitely what you were supposed to look for. You want to start creating a community. The more faster you create a community, the more empathy, the more passion people will have towards your product and services, the more they will care about what you have to say. Why, how your product should, can help. Even if they have a hundred different types of product and services that are doing the same thing, they would come to you because you know your product. You look like a thought leader. People will follow you. They like how they would actually like how your product sells, right? So you definitely want to actually think of how you can actually develop a community in your social media in creating content, right? All right, uh, next up, we actually have, uh, I want you to think of value, trust, empowerment, hope, community and results in terms of how can you create the content? When you're gonna create a content, I know it's very difficult to put in your mind, how can you create content that's value, that creates value? How can you create content that creates trust? How about empowerment, hope and community and results? By just these words, it's difficult to think of what content would create that. So whenever you're doing that, I want you to keep this in mind. RLV, okay? So RLV is results, lifestyle, and value, right? So bear in mind, results. This is what people want to see. Tutorials. Uh, how can you showcase results in terms of tutorials, in terms of winnings, awards? Um, if they use your product, what do they get? How would they, how would it be different to their life? How can people, what is the benefit they get out of it? So those are the results you want to show that creates trust, that creates value, that creates hope because you get to see that the results at the end, right? Then next up you want to do is lifestyle. Okay, you want to showcase all about the followers. You want to, it, want, you, you always want to think what would followers want to see? 
perhaps you know joining your business or being part of your business would actually be able to sh- they will be able to go for holidays so you want to showcase that you are going for multiple different holidays or you're able to live a much more luxurious fulfilled life because of what your business has brought to you so if they join your business they will be able to actually uh, have a full uh, fuller life so what does, does that do that creates hope that creates community and that creates that showcases the results so for example just take an image in mind say you are by the swimming pool you can even post that in your business page in fact you're by the swimming pool you're having fun with your family why are you able to have that fun you can actually ask them in the captions um how would you imagine if you have a successful business how would you imagine your life would be ask that in the caption and let your um let your customers let your clients let your followers answer the question online so you create showcase your lifestyle but also create a dream get them to think get them to dream get them to hope get them to feel so that is all about lifestyle you don't want it to just be where you showcase a lifestyle and then there's no no um content about it no um there's no conversation about it so you definitely want to create conversation you want to create engagement right okay so i have one question from fatima um she's the ceo of an lnd consultancy company realize that some of the clients are always keen to negotiate on cost of learning solutions and resources she's a bit frustrated that um i find that it's a local company in products and services they don't want to pay so much and they don't mind paying in usd or euro for foreign consultant foreign consultants that offer the same quality of products and services in the end there are also local providers who would lower their price and yen lose as well can you advise please all right okay fatima i actually encountered the same problem um when i first started out um currently i actually engage with a lot of international companies as well as my clients so uh, when i started out i had the same problem as well everyone would prefer to have a a bigger company or either go for international companies that have done um that also provide the same services that i do so how do i actually get them to trust me it's all about the trust you see you want to showcase that they how you can actually create value now you can create content that they need to feel yes currently you're competing with international companies how do you actually make sure that they look at you they trust you what you need to do is create content that empowers them create a community where they can actually discuss about what are the programs they want from you um what kind of trainers they want from you what kind of services they want from you so you want to create value why should they hire you you want to showcase that in your content why should they hire you why should they come to you why i most of the times when i see lnd consultancy company learning and development i i'm guessing that you mean by um you're doing trainings you're doing conferences you're doing forums so if i think of that what people would always when i look at contents from companies like that all i see is they're always selling their products they're always selling their their services so you want to keep in mind that it's not always about the products and services yes you want to showcase them but only 20% of the time the rest of the time what you want to do is create content that can create value say for example if you're going to sell a for example a soft skill a presentation skill training if that's what you're going to sell so you can actually get the trainer or the speaker to talk about maybe a 2 minutes or 3 minutes video of why should they attend what would they learn what why should they attend the particular um, presentation skill training and that creates value then that showcases the benefits of it they get to see who's the trainer so they are going to think in mind that you actually care more about your clients than any other company so you want to showcase as much to people not just what product and services that you're selling you want to keep in mind how can you create value with them how can you create trust what kind of content create trust so you want to showcase how does it look in environment when the training is happening how's the environment of the training you have you're putting them in a great hotel or in a beautiful ballroom or you have wonderful trainers you have a great team that make sure that they get in touch with the uh, company so showcase why should they trust you because i'm sure having a in house in country um you know leading a uh, sorry learning and development consultancy company in their country will actually bring them more benefit than actually hiring a international company so how can they 
trust you. What You have a lot more that you can showcase in terms of trust compared to an international company. So showcase the trust. Why should they trust you? Why? What is the benefit of it? How can you empower them? Empowerment in sense of you can actually create a uh, content that engages with all these people. What You can actually make a poll, for example. Um, you can create a poll of two or different two or three different types of con um, training that your particular companies would prefer. Maybe you can pick a few uh, programs that are best sellers for you. And what you can do is you can showcase that as program A, B, C, and let the poll happen. And you can actually see what is the most effective. You empower them to actually engage with you. And you can actually just ask them what, for example, you can just write in the caption and say that, what program would you like to attend for your training? Or what kind of conference would you like to attend? So create give them the empowerment to actually be able to choose to be able to pick be part of something be part of your company you need to make them feel like they are the, the one place that you want to come to when you think of training you think of lead, uh, learning and development they need to come to you so that's what you need to uh, create you need to create content that make people fall in love with you most of the time all we do is create content thinking that we are speaking to robots behind the computer so but the thing is we always forget to notice that we are dealing with humans and when we are dealing with humans we want them to they are passionate creatures humans love to actually you know to see lifestyle like to see results they are value driven so you want to showcase that showcase them how can they what can they get out of you why should they be part of your team you want to make sure that they feel that they are part of your learning and development company create hope for them by by attending this training, what is it that you can get out of it? How, how, what is it that you're going to learn? What's the benefit out of it? Create a community where they're able to talk and discuss. Perhaps after the training, after the event, they can actually discuss in a particular Facebook page or maybe on a different media platform where they can actually discuss um, the topics. They are able to get more information. They're able to get eBooks. They're able to get PDFs, documents, slides. So create a community where they can discuss with you, with your team, um, not just about buying and selling or getting your services in terms of learning and development, but also other things that uh, that you are able to give them because you have you are in touch with a lot of trainers, you're in touch with a lot of speakers. So you're able to get a lot of eBooks, PDFs from them, maximize that and showcase it to them. And go out there, create a community with all the people that you have already, uh, you have already done for learning and development. So create that community where they have a sense of belonging to you. They want to come back to you because they feel like, um, you know, they feel like they're inducted to you. They feel that they can trust you. They value you. So you want to actually create the community. You want to make sure that everyone is connected. They are getting more out of it. When people feel they're valued, they feel like they're getting so much more out of it. They're definitely going to come back to you over and over again. So what you want to do showcase your value first yes currently you're new so what you want to do you want to showcase your value why should they come to you what's the benefit of coming to you perhaps your speakers perhaps the style you, uh, the methodology that you're using the way your after after sales service or your during the sales service then how can they trust you how can you empower them what kind of hope can you bring perhaps after the training you go back home with a lot of knowledge you know you go back home with uh, a lot of ebooks you go back home a lot of notes you know stuff like that hope community build a sense of community and you want to showcase the results so go back there get in touch with um your previous um companies previous companies that you have trained and get the results you can see that is there a difference if there is a difference showcase the difference by attending training with your company they have actually increased sales in 10%, 20%. They are more motivated, perhaps. So you definitely want to showcase that. So when in terms in coming to developing content, where no matter what business you are, you want to show value, you want to show trust, you want to show empowerment, hope, community results. I can't emphasize this enough. You, This is what you want to create content for. And how do you create content? Is by using the RLB, uh, RLB technique, results, lifestyle, value. Right. So I hope I uh, answered your question, Fatima. If you do have more questions, please do drop it on the chat and I'll answer it for you. Okay. So here are some example of social media content ideas that you can use. Okay. So you have images, you have infographics, you have memes, you have cartoons. Um, ask a question. 
the motivation, uh, motivational quotes, testimonials, promote your website. So there's a variety of different kinds of um, social media content. Now, what else can you do? I'm going to go a little bit more detailed on the content that you can create. You can share your story, who you are, what your passion is, talk to them about your struggles, how you overcome them. How did you create the company? Uh, why did you create the company? Why did you pick the industry? Why did you pick that particular product or services? Um, talk to them about your failures, about your wins, about your milestones, about how you actually end up where you are right now. Uh, tell a funny story about something connected to your business. Share behind the scenes photo or videos. Share what's happening at work. Uh, I, I don't see this enough. People want to know who's behind at work. Like share about your employees. Share about what you do on a whole day. Uh, what's your production cycle? How's your after sales service, service like? How do you deal with customers? Um, you know, showcase that. What is the step-by-step -step on on actually buying your product perhaps. Make videos on business events. So if you have events, business events, you would definitely wanna make videos of that. Explain why you decided to buy a product uh, or join a business. And then you can actually talk about your, talk about your products, how you can help people. So like I've already told you about how can you, how can they benefit out of you? Share someone else's inspiring story. So for example, you, again, I'm, you have to bear in mind in terms of social media content development, you never really have to stick to just your, your business, you know, never have to just stick to your industry. You have so much more that you can do. So if you are currently stuck, like, like I can tell you when I, how I used to be thinking of that as well, that there's only so much content that I can create, but there's so much more. So I'm going to go through with you. Like I'm going to just give you about 120 different ideas here. Um, you can talk about your products, how do they help you. You can show someone else's inspiring story, perhaps another thought leader in your industry or someone else completely different. How has they inspired you and write about it? Showcase their video or showcase their image and write about it. Um, share a testimonial of the customers. If you possible, share it in a video form. It's much more um, relevant. It's more, more trustable. So videos are something that you want to move towards too. Share content ideas in terms of quotes as well. What you can do is share a funny quote about your niche. Share an inspirational quote and tell your audience what you think about that specific quote. Ask them questions, you know, what do they think? So you're going to share an interesting quote on that day and get them chatting. In the caption, just say, ask them, what do they think about that quote? Okay. Um, share a quote on, in terms of graphic. Ask your audience what they think about it. Share your favorite quote and then ask your audience to share their favorite quote perhaps. Um, in Questions, in terms of questions, what you can do is ask your audience, what's your biggest struggle in business? You know, that is something that will actually get them talking, especially for Fatima. I think what you can do is um, you can actually ask your audience, what's your biggest business struggle? And you can see people pouring in. I've actually used this strategy. I've asked this so many times on my social media as well. I asked them to tell them about what's their business struggle. And you can actually get a lot of ideas about what kind of training you can actually sell to them. So go ahead and ask this question. What's your biggest struggle in business? And ask them, what should you post next? Ask them, which topic should you cover in a live video? Um, if you can do a live video, it would be amazing. Maybe you can just take a video around your office, talk about your staff, about your business, about your product, about your day. And then you can ask, uh, another thing you can do is actually post a question out there and say, what live video next would you like to watch, All right? And ask questions related to your business or industry. So, for example, if you are in learning and development like Fatima, what you can do is actually just um, throw out the question, what kind of training would you like to attend? Which trainer would you like to see next? Or um, what would you like to learn? You know, stuff like that. Um, and then you can also ask for recommendation of books. You can ask your audiences, what books would they recommend for you to read? Courses that you can look at, um, something related to your business. So just ask questions. This is actually going to create a lot of engagement. So people, what you want to do, the main idea at the beginning is actually get, uh, get them talking. Create as much engagement as possible. So something related to your business. Ask them about books, about courses, about events anything at all ask as many questions as you want because the more questions you ask the more audiences you're going to have right 
Next, you can actually use days of the week as your post. How do we do that? So there's seven days in a week, Monday to Sunday. So you can actually start off with motivational Monday, motivate your audience, post a quote and motivate them with something. Ask them about what they think about a quote like earlier. And you can hashtag motivation Monday. A uh, tip of Tuesday related to your niche, you can create a tip according to your industry. Um, and that is tip, Tuesday tips, perhaps. And Wednesday, create wisdom Wednesday. So you can actually create um, perhaps a wisdom that you like to share with your customers, consumers, you know, like why you should buy product A in, instead of product B, or maybe you can use product A in this kind of style. So you definitely want to actually showcase your a wisdom a little bit. That seems like you fall under the the education and creating value for people. So you definitely want to actually showcase wisdom every week if possible. Uh, throwback Thursday. So what you can do is showcase previous results, milestones that you want to, you know, you want to show up a little bit. Uh, photos of your trip, perhaps, or, you know, your family time. And freebie Friday. So you can actually give them an ebook, PDFs, um, you know, a shout out to them. So those are the things that you can actually do. Uh, Saturdays, you can talk about something special. So it's actually called hashtag Saturday special. And then Sunday fun day, share about what you did on Sunday. Um, next, you can actually go talk about business. So in terms of business, this is where the 20% falls under. I'm Definitely not asking you to post this 80% of the time. So if you have 30 days in a week, keep in mind only 20% of the time should always be about products and services. And the rest of the time is supposed to be something that falls under the category of uh, what we've spoken about, right? So here's what you want to do or in terms of business, give away coupon codes, talk about your product that's on sale, sell your products or services, promote your new product, um, talk about the benefits of your product and how it helped you. Promote your one day only flash sale. You can talk about your discounts. You can talk about um, anything and everything about your products and services. Go all out on, on in terms of business as well. But this is only 20% of the time, all right? And then let's see, we have special content ideas in terms of videos. You can host a webinar, make a live video, right? on your profile, on your page, on your group. People love live videos, so make live videos. If possible, try to make a live video a week once, right? Host a giveaway, create a video with a couple of tips. So get one of your employees or you yourself can actually do it. You actually can talk about the tips that you wanna give. Um, and then you can actually redirect them to tell them the audience that you can find more tips on your vlog, on your YouTube or other social media channels. So you can actually direct them to different social media channels. So if you have like a lot of audiences on Instagram and you want to divert them into a YouTube channel, this is how you do it. You actually can say that you can say about maybe three or four tips on your Instagram and then you can type with them and say that, hey guys, you know, uh, for more tips, follow us on our YouTube channel. You can actually get more subscribers that way and people will find you. And so that's the best way you can actually do that. And next we can actually have, um, make an interview with a leader in your company. So it could be the industry leader, your CEO, your managing director, or maybe the, uh, the head of department perhaps. So you can actually make an interview with them, ask them about the questions about the business as well as lifestyle, right? Make it fun, make it entertaining. Don't make it like a press conference. Try to avoid that whole super business-like image on social media because social media is all about fun. It's all about lifestyle. You want people to fall in love. Again, the whole idea is you want them to fall in love with you. If people only get to, I mean, think about it. You don't actually go out on a date and give them your CV, right? So you want to actually make them fall in love with you. Social media is about making them fall in love with you, showing your passion, being fun, being interesting. Okay. So even no matter what business you are, how corporate you are, social media is all about showcasing the fun part about your business, educating them, showing lifestyle. So create content that's going to engage them, right? Uh, what you can do is also upload short videos showing behind the scenes and your lifestyle. Host and ask me anything live video. So they can actually ask you anything on their live video. Next, you can actually do a how-tos. So what's how-tos? Share a step-by-step uh, how-to tutorial, all right? Share uh, how to create something specific in your niche. Um, how to create and write down your goals, perhaps, you know, example of that. And challenges, challenge your audience to post every day for 30 days and give them a free social media calendar. That's an example that I'm giving you. Um, 
create a challenge about your niche you know for example if you are under a weight loss program or maybe a learning and development you can actually like 30 day challenge of maybe read a perhaps read a book in a, a month you know stuff like that and then if you don't have any ideas you want to ask your audience what kind of challenges so you can maximize your audience again it's all about being fun it's been about engaging it's about winning them over as a human so you can actually push your idea of you can actually ask ideas from your audiences that's the whole best part about being in social media is your audiences you need to treat your audiences like a best friend so ask your audience away you know uh, what do you, what challenges would they want right social media uh, in content ideas in terms of mini courses for example you can create a 5 day mini course about a specific topic in your niche uh, make an email 7 day mini course create mini course and put them on your website or youtube all right and you can also talk about your uh, share you know share it on other social media platforms right next you can also create a giveaway and freebies giveaway products of your to your super fans perhaps you have a really really consistent person who's engaging with you so you can actually give away freebies um create freebies about a topic that your audience struggles with perhaps maybe one of your product or services host a big giveaway um you can actually do that and give away 15 minutes coaching call you know maybe with, if you are on learning and development what, what maybe one of the things i can actually win is a 15 minute call with one of the trainers of yours um make a freebie ebook and give away in exchange of email uh, address this is where you actually get the generation so you definitely want to try it out put an ebook and they have to actually fill up their little bit of their contact information and they can they able to download their ebook so that's the easiest way to get lead gen and one thing that i would like you to actually try out is actually mention your followers and fans welcome new followers and thank them to joining your group and page uh, shout out to your top 3 fans create celebrate your number of followers so if you have 1000 followers you thank them and you celebrate a particular day 20000 followers 30000 followers so on and so forth celebrate with them you know you want to be thankful for them share a testimonial from a fan and thank them again um create a vip list and each week choose one winner and send them the link to your vip list where they will get at least one freebie per week so you can do that uh, cross promote your content share your instagram post on your facebook perhaps uh, create a similar post and share it on all your social media platforms use the same photo graphics on another social media platform uh, share link on instagram on your facebook page you know play around with all the social media that you have right and then um you can also use polls now this is the fun part of polls everyone likes to they don't mind playing with it because they don't actually have to give so much thought into it so what you can do is create a facebook poll in your live video you can create a facebook poll on your profile or your page um create a poll on your stories all right and whether it's facebook stories or either instagram stories you can also create a poll all right and you can share your life share your life tips all right like for example you can this is about lifestyle a little bit you can talk about your morning routine you can share your top 3 favorite personal development book so if you are the owner of a company all right you can share your morning routine okay it actually works you get a lot of engagement i tried it and i actually got a lot of more engagement than my common uh, business content share top 3 personal favorite development books uh, talk about leaders you look up to talk about people that you look up to that inspires you you know because people would like to listen what you think they like to listen what you talk about because having a company is already an inspiration enough that you are so you would act, they would actually listen to what you have to say and share your quick time saving tips explain how you prepare for the day or week share all the things you do daily um share your top favorite apps websites um content this will actually create more Uh, engagement people love lifestyle content try it out just for a week and you will see a whole lot of difference share top tools and resources all right so what you can do is talk about the tools that help you create content perhaps share your favorite apps for creating uh great photos um talk about share the best resources that help you grow your business maybe about books about courses about what inspired you talk about the tools that help you save time all right next up when it comes to about you content about you how do you deal with that you can actually ask 
ask me anything post. You know the live video that I told you about, that ask me anything? So that's something you can actually do. Share what's on your bucket list. Share your vision board. Talk about what you stand for, your morals, your standards, your vision, your mission. Share which trip you're planning to next. Maybe you plan on a, on a trip with your team. You have a team building session. Showcase that, right? And then what you want to do is share your trip. Um, talk about your favorite destinations. Share why you started working in, yeah, on your business. What attracted you the most? What you don't like about it? What you love about it? Uh, what are your struggles? All right. Talk about what's your favorite motivational speaker and why. Create a letter to your younger self. You know, it's us. You create a letter and start it out. You know, people like uh, talking about themselves. They like listening to others as well. So if you are one of those that actually can, um, what you can do is share a letter of your younger self and get people talking about it. And that will actually create, and you get an idea of what your customer demographics are like, right? Create a video on how to use your products. Uh, answer the most asked question about your products. Share a sneak peek of your upcoming video. Uh, share your new blog post, right? And what you can do next is, uh, now the most famous thing is vlogs. So go towards vlogs, share a lot of videos. Um, what you can do is share your vlog on social media. Reshare your blog of older posts, right? So you can actually get an attention for the older post. Um, showcase your sneak peek of your upcoming product if you have any. And then you actually can share a guest, blo uh, guest blog post that you made on someone else's blog that you have. Grow your email list. Now, how do you grow your email list? So uh, one way was through the lead generation. Tell people to sign up on your email list. That's one way and promote a few things and get them to actually sign up. That's one, a second way. And the third way is actually make sure that you get freebies, like what I've mentioned, eBooks, uh, PDFs, slide shares. So they fill up that particular form and they're able to download eBooks, slide shares, uh, webinars, videos, perhaps. So that is something that you can actually grow your lead generation, right? Now, next up, um, other social media content ideas would probably be like, please share your old content, photos, quotes, graphics. You can share some interesting news about your niche or business. Okay, talk about your favorite things. Share five things about yourself that most people don't know. Um, you can talk about fill in the blank posts, you know, um, create a post and guess the right answer. So you can give them something about your business and create a poll. And then you, what you do is you get them uh, answer A, B, C and get them to choose, right? And next thing you can do is shout out to your customers or followers and thank them, all right? So that's very important. Please don't forget to thank your followers. You know, they are kind enough to follow you, to be part of your, your group. Just remember they are part of your family. They're part of your business. So thank them. They, are, they have so much that you can actually um, do for your consumers. So always thank them. You get a lot of ideas from them as well. Talk about the events that you'll be hosting. Share your favorite podcast. Talk about marketing mistakes and how to fix them. Ask your followers how they, have, they found you. Um, share some statistics of your niche. Again, this falls under 20%, so don't do it too often. Create a case study. Talk about why your why. Why are you doing what you're doing? Uh, share fun facts about you or your company. Maybe fun facts about what year you created, how many staff you have. Uh, maybe one of your first products and services. Um, fun facts about you as well. Uh, wish everyone happy holidays. Maximize the holidays. You can follow a theme of it. So maximize your holidays. Um, share infographics. Create a day in life post. Recommend someone else your audience should follow. Uh, post a photo. Ask your followers to create a title for it. So this is like creating a caption. So for example, if you have no idea what to actually post on the day, post a picture of something that's related to your business or not related to your business entirely up to you. And ask your followers to actually come up with a caption for it. So that creates an engagement. Okay. So those are a few ideas for you. Um, now, how do you actually come up with ideas? This is what I do. Uh, as you can see here, this is a mini mind map. So, so we have all this, um, this social media here, for example, four different types of social media here. Uh, so what you want to do is showcase the lifestyle, the value, the results. And then what you want to do is, in terms of results, what content can you create? 
you know, the winnings, the tutorials, the awards in terms of results, in value, product benefits, what you have learned in terms of lifestyle, what you have achieved, ask questions. So what you want to do in uh, creating the content is you want to create a timetable, you want to post what image, what video you're going to do it and what caption you're going to have. So that way you, you can keep it out of your mind after that. So post, create a schedule, put in all the content in that schedule in terms of video images, what is it going to be about and write the caption one shot. Don't, don't actually have, don't do the part where you actually have to create the caption on that day. So then you will be overthinking, you'll be stressed out about it and you might not create a very great caption. So what you want to do is create everything in advance and let it go, right? So what we're going to do is actually continue a little bit more about context. What is context? Okay. Now, you want to understand the framework of context. So who are you viewing it with? You want to understand who your customers are, what is in the mind of your customers. Okay. Now, you want to be on the seat of your customers in terms of context. Who are you viewing it? A father watching with his daughter would make a different choice that he might make with his, different, with his friends. So you want to bear in mind, if you're with your kids, what content are you going to look at? And if you're with your spouse, what content are you going to look at? And if you're with your friends, what content are you going to look at? So where does, where does your content fall under? What access do you have? What devices, bandwidth, usage rights do you have? So what can, where would you watch it? Would you watch it on the cinema? Would you watch it on your phone? Would you watch it on TV? So you want to bear in mind what access do you, did they have? Okay. Next, you want to know how does it fit into your day? Where does your viewing fit in your life in terms of time of day, time available and location? Okay. Are you waiting for your Uber to arrive? Is it a Friday night? Is it a Saturday night? Is it a weekend? Is it a working day? Is it during a working hours? So you want to bear in mind, where does your content fit in? Maybe your content fits in right in the middle of a day. Um, maybe it's not suitable for the weekend. So you want to keep that in mind. Um, then, how salient are your program choices? Did a launch pique your interest in the latest action movie? Did a friend convince you to watch a comedy? Uh, are you just searching it on your phone? Okay. So you want to bear in mind where, what kind of program choices do you make? How do you make the choice? Right. So these are in terms of context. Now, content. Don't let your creativity get stale. Think out of the box. Like just now, I just told you about 120 different types of ideas that, of content that you can create. Try new angles. Experiment with colors and visual effects. Take advantage of latest video pictures. I mean, go out and play with Instagram. There's so much they can do. And TikTok now. Uh, put good use of stories in powerful engagement tools. Um, with stories, you're able to drive traffic and, you know, drive traffic to you. Conduct a poll, create a buzz, all right? Aim for unconventional. Experiment with filters, drawing tools, as well as video editing tools. And don't neglect sound. Again, senses, as many senses as you can actually use. So the more senses you can actually get in touch with, with them, you're able to create for them, the better, all right? So always, always think of using maximum senses, okay? Next, you want to actually think of telling a story. This is very important that you want to look at. Tell a story. Okay. Tell a story, be found, communicate directly. And you are able to, in terms of tell a story, you want to create a relationship with them. So how do you create a relationship with them is you want to create stories. Be found, reach all your audiences, no matter who they are, right? So what do you want to do? Be in all social media as much as possible. Communicate directly and post often, all right? The one way you can be found easily is you're on all social media platforms and you have so much of posts everywhere, right? Communicate directly with your customers. Respond to your comments on your ads, on your posts. Make sure that you respond. So respond as much as you can, as often as you can, right? Next, complete the ad experience. This allows people to visit your account profile. So in, if you're going to create an ad, what you want to do is make sure they're able to visit your account. They're able to have a link to your website or to other social medias, or they're able to have a call to action button to call you, to email you, to go to your website, to go to your e-commerce site. Make sure you actually maximize your ads. Right? Next up. You would. Okay, here's the 
parts that you actually need to focus on, which is create a content calendar. Like I've mentioned to you, create a content calendar in advance, right? Identify themes, right? So if you are actually having it on a holiday season, so if it's Christmas, make it seasonal, make it Christmassy. If it's Raya, make it very uh, Hari Raya related. Uh, if it is, I uh, mean, Raya is an eat, and then if it is very, follow the theme of maybe seasonal themes, summer, winter, spring, autumn, uh, have fun with it, choose colors relating with it, choose the right formats, whether you want to showcase video, photo, carousel, we uh, in any other types of formats that you would prefer. So play around with the format, see which one's best, which one creates more engagement. Um, don't wait to write captions, like I mentioned earlier, create the caption uh, on the spot as well, right? When you're doing your content, if possible, try to create content a month earlier, okay? Pay attention to timing. Now, uh, just to give you a tip, what I do in terms of creating a content calendar is I create content calendars six months in advance. And as it goes by, I review it every month prior to the month itself, because then I will be able to change any kind of content or caption that's going to appear. If there's any changes to seasonal or any changes in terms of holidays um, and any changes in terms of business as well. So then you actually are able to review. So create as much content as possible and keep it ready to be posted um, in advance. So create everything and you can post it as it goes, right? And pay attention to timing. Timing is very important. What time do you post? When do you post? How do you post? It's super crucial because that's where you, uh, your target audience is, right? Whether your audiences are the person who look at it like after working hours, is your audiences on the younger age below 18 or 21? Is your audiences uh, above 50 or 55? You want to keep that in mind, right? So that is how you actually uh, play around with posting according to timing, okay? Establish workflow, right? Uh, cover a de dedicated block of time for you. So what you can do is actually uh, schedule everything and maybe your review is a dedicated part of a month. Maybe it's beginning of the first or second day of the month. So establish a workflow where you actually know when to look at your social media. Okay, now next up you're actually going to do is uh, understanding your bias persona. Now in terms of bias persona, this is extremely important. This is how you actually get an idea of what content to create according to the age group, the job, the dynamics of the person. So by conducting interviews, survey, engaging your prospects, social media, asking for feedback, you can actually start building a, um, a profile, okay? Uh, in terms of branding, however, I'll be speaking more about it on Wednesday, but this is a little bit about it, okay? So what you wanna do is um, understand what career demographics information, what typical day in their life is like, what their challenges are, their pain points are, what questions they're asking, where they search from uh, their information, common objections. So what I like to do is I would actually always think of, um, this is one way you can do it. If your business is a human, you wanna keep in mind, if your business is a human, your company is a human, whether would it be a male or female? Is it, what kind of age group does it fall under? What would they, um, what kind of house would they be living in? Would they be married or would they not be married? Um, what kind of how, car would they drive? Where would they eat their lunch or dinner? What kind of friends would they have? What kind of clothes would they wear? So that gives you an idea of what your demographics is like. So the more you answer the character questions, the more you actually will be able to determine who your demographics are. So then you would actually know what kind of typical day they would have. Uh, what kind of social media channels would they look at? What kind of content would they be interested in? So if someone is already married and is a parent, would you, uh, what kind of content would they prefer best? That's how you create your content, right? And when you know what job they do, where they spend time on internet, what type of content they prefer, you can use that information to create extremely relevant, targeted and personalized content, right? Here we go. Okay, now buyer's journey. Okay. Every buyer has a journey that you want to keep in mind. The part of awareness, consideration, and decision. Awareness is what does your prospect need during the awareness stage. Information, education, this is what they want from you. They want, if 
you are a brand new company or either if you've been around always, you want to bear in mind if you're looking at a new customer, you want to keep in mind that they're going to be in the awareness stage. So what they want from you, they want information, they want education, they want to know what they can get out of you, what they can benefit, what products benefits them, right? And you want to see, you need to do research on their problem because they're not, they're not yet your consumers, but they're dipping their toes in. So that's a good, uh, good thing for you. So you make sure that you answer all your questions in this awareness stage of content. Next, you want to, you're in the consideration. They will be considering you. So more specific, but you still want to avoid promoting yourself too much. Always bear in mind, it's 80-20. So more specific, but you still want to avoid promoting yourself as no decision to build has been made yet, right? Always have a call to action on this post that you're posting that they can go to e-commerce site, they can call you, they can email you, they can uh, text you perhaps. And what you wanna do is also be able to have downloadable content, right? Next is where they actually make their decision. Keep in mind that you have to be consistently helpful resource providing value to this prospect. So this is their journey that you're gonna have with them. Awareness, consideration, decision okay now after you have short you will be shortlisted if you actually follow this particular style after all you have remained front of the mind throughout the journey without turning the customer off by being too salesy why because your content is 20 percent only dealing with um your product and your business and about your services 80 percent of the time it's all about them so you're not too salesy, they're going to fall in love with the product, they're going to fall in love with your, your social media platform, how helpful you are, how kind you are, how nice you are. So what happens is you already build a reputation with them. They trust you and they're definitely going to buy it from you. All right. Even if they don't buy it from you, what's going to happen is they're already a consumer in their mind. They're already going to buy from you anyway in the future. So you've already created a re relationship. With going awareness, consideration, addition, you've already created a full relationship where you have a long-term customer, right? So that's something that you want to bear in mind. This is a buyer's journey throughout. So always, always keep in mind, every buyer, they're going to come to you in awareness stage, consideration, addition, okay? So content should be always relating to this awareness, consideration, addition. Okay, so now developing a relationship. It may be useful to remember the prospect cycle changes along the way. So you have to always bear in mind, again, awareness, consideration, and addition. It's gonna constantly change between these two, these three. They start off as strangers in the awareness stage, become visitors in the consideration stage, and leads into decision stage, and they potentially become your customer, right? So think of the etiquette of meeting someone new, the way you interact with strangers will be different, right? Like, for example, if you don't know someone, how are you going to interact with them? Once you're a friend, how are you going to interact with them? Uh, once you're really good friends, and how are you going to interact with them? That is how you're going to look at a bias persona, right? You want to build a relationship with them. You want to build a trust. You want to build the, the sense of comfort in them, right? So then you'll be known as a trusted brand. Next. Um, context is all about practice. So you want to actually, uh, we can, you can now see that the context not only changes by the individual, it changes over time as well. It changes between the awareness, consideration and awareness, uh, awareness, consideration, decision making. So how can you position your content in a way that provides most value to your audience in any given time? So this is how you do it. All right. So you have the listening part, the analyzing part and the acting part. Now, in terms of listening, you want to be able to, uh, in terms of listening, you actually want to look at researching, surveying, and interviewing to compile information about your target audience. Okay? For example, actively engage with your prospect on social media. So that is one way you can actually uh, do in step one, which is listening. And step two, analyzing what you want to do is involves tracking behavioral data, using tools like web data analytics, how you visitors interact with your website. And third is acting. When approaching a lead, either through a direct contact or the promotion of the content, be intentional with it, right? Next up, from prospects to friend. It's about building a relationship with prospects as they travel along the buyer's journey. So again, it's all about human contact. It's not so much to think about. All you have to remember is that your customers are humans. So humans are very emotional creatures. They, 
they make decisions according to emotions. So all you have to do is make them fall in love with you. So once you're able to do that, you'll be able to win any, any kind of customers. So always bear in mind, 80, 20 is the most important uh, part of the, uh, 80, 20 is the style that you want to follow. And what you want to do, we will actually just go through one round, run through the most important parts of it. So this is 80, 20 in terms of the theory of creating the content. So this is what you want to keep in mind. 80% of the time, you want to actually remember that it's all about the lifestyle, all about value adding, all about education. 20% of the time is where you can actually spend time on the business development, um, on creating business related content, which is discounts, which is talking about uh, your services, talking about your products, the benefits, the why should they buy, how to use the product, everything falls under the 20%, 80% of the time you have to create value for them, all right? So always remember, this is the most crucial part in content development. It's about value, it's about trust, it's about empowerment, hope, community, and results. So never forget in terms of creating content, you want to create value, you want to create trust, you want to create empowerment, you want to create hope, you want to have community, and you want to create results. Again, how do you do that? With the RLV results, which is tutorial winning and awards, lifestyle, it's all about the followers. You want to make the changes. You want them to follow your lifestyle. You want them to dream. You're selling them a dream, right? By buying your product, by buying your service. What is it that they can get out of you? So again, humans are all about making, it's all about making them fall in love with you. So value, trust, empowerment, hope, community, and results. With this six, you'll be able to definitely convince any customer to be purchasing the products or services from you. So you can have to be result driven, lifestyle driven, and value driven, right? So this is the most important criteria in developing your content. And I've gone through with you 120 different types of content. How to actually create, this is a mind map of how to actually create your content. If you're ever stuck and you're not sure what, how, what kind of content you wanna create, then you can actually start creating the content this way. Um, First, lay out what is it that you want to talk about. So create the mind map. What are the social media that you're going to use? What are the results that you want to get? What, what are the results that you want to showcase? Keep in mind the goals that you want to achieve. What results you want to showcase? What value you want to showcase? And what lifestyle you want to showcase, all right? So always try to use this style whenever you are actually, um, whenever you're actually stuck with getting content ideas. Earlier today, I gave you 100 different 20, 120 different types of content ideas, but always bear in mind 120 different content ideas. Most of them are related. Again, 20% of it is actually totally business related and 80% of it was completely lifestyle oriented, value driven to actually show them who you are, what you are, and why, I mean, why they should be with you. Why should they follow you? Why should they fall in love with you? Why should they buy from you? So you definitely want to do that, right? So if you're ever stuck, this is the style to do it. Content, write down all the um, social media that you're using, then go towards results, value, and lifestyle. Some of it, what you can do is actually reuse in terms of product benefits. So Facebook, you're talking about product benefit number one. You can actually um, perhaps post a picture first, and the next content can be in a video format. The next uh, Format could be in terms of a tutorial. The next one could be how to uh, what, and what can you achieve? What is the benefit? So just by product benefits, you have the six different type of content and you can actually play around with the Instagram uh, by Instagram stories, the Instagram posts, uh, by different graphics and then with LinkedIn and with uh, YouTube. So you can just play around, have fun with it. Uh, you know, it, it's all about having fun. It's all about making them, you know, understand that you're human too, right? And always bear in mind the context. Who are you? Who are they viewing it with? Who are they with at all times? What access do you have? How do they fit into your day? Um, and how salient are your program choices? All right. Play with it. So again, all about social media is telling a story, being fun, um, keeping in track of your brand, um, showcasing them, showcasing to them who you are, that you really care as a human. So be found. Make sure that you're in all social media. So the, the trick here is tell stories, all right? Tell stories, be found, be in all social media platforms, post every day, 
uh, as much as possible. If you're on social media, uh, in if you're on Instagram stories, perhaps 10 Instagram stories will actually really help you. 10 Instagram stories a day in your for your business will actually make quite a difference. Um, complete that, um, add experience, have a call to action button. So they have something to do and that way you can actually get a lead uh, generation. Create a calendar, bear in mind, calendar is so important so you can get it out of your head. You won't be stressed out about what content to build every day, what should I post every day. The only thing you wanna be worried about is the stories that you can create every day. But the post should be totally out of your head and it's already prepared long ago. So prepare six months in advance, three months in advance, what's gonna be posted every day. The only thing that you want to worry about is just the stories of what's happening every day. So employee or yourself, what you can do is just take what's happening at work, what, where are you having lunch, what are you having for lunch, where you're going, who you're having meetings with, where, where you're spending your time, what time you're going back home, meeting clients. Those are all the contents you can actually post on the story. So have fun with it. Be inspiring and play around with it, write captions. Uh, one issue that uh, most of my clients face is that captions. They always, always forget about captions. So what they do is they have an idea of what they want to post. They already prepare a schedule, but they don't write their captions. So write the captions in advance because then you won't have to think too much. So write the captions in advance. Everything is prepared a few months earlier or at least a month earlier and it's all ready to be posted up. So that way you will actually create amazing content because you have a lot of time to think about your content, right? Um, and let's continue. Understand your bias persona, get to know your clients and ask this question every day. Who are your clients? Who are they? What do they do? Where are they from? What exactly is their lifestyle like? So follow that. A biased journey, you need to understand how's their journey. Their journey is that when they don't know you, what they're going to do is be aware of their their be aware of who you are and then they want to know what you can offer. They need to consider you. They need to be able to compare you with another brand. You need to stand out. And then finally, they make the decision. You want to be so helpful to them that they, they're going to be deciding that it's you, right? Then you want to definitely build a relationship. Um, how do you actually understand the context of it is by listening, analyzing, and acting. So, and... So that is the end of it. What even uh, if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask questions. Um, we do have one question here, which is from Melissa Osborne. Um, run a software development and data management company. We create AI solutions for business. We currently have a health companies using our care app, and we have a transport company who use a software we developed. This has saved the transport company 80 million over the past year. The trouble is because my husband has already been working at that company, they haven't paid him for the product. They have been using it for free for one year and a half with no errors for what it does. I have told him we need to branch out and pitch to other transport companies with the solution and, and both go full time so we can run, consistently produce content online. He's hoping they will pay him eventually, but I can see how that company behaves. Please advise. Okay, now uh, I, I think that um, the what you're asking here, Melissa Osborn, is that is uh, how the companies are going to behave. Okay, to be honest with you, uh, uh, it's amazing what you actually created. I, I like what you have created and how much it actually has benefited the company. So you want to showcase that on your social media as well. Uh, one thing you can do in terms of this part of the business, it's it's not so much of a marketing issue that you're having right now. I think it's more of you're worried about uh, how the companies are going to behave. Now, um, what I can say is that, uh, to be honest with you, this is not all how all companies behave. I think what they're doing is actually um, because your husband's working there and you know maybe there's a way that you can actually ask them, perhaps by sending invoices or quotations to them, they'll be able to actually take you seriously uh, that they actually have to pay you. But uh, be, you don't actually have to stress out in terms of other uh, transport companies. They, everyone would eventually pay once they understand that you are serious about your um you're serious about your business and that you create amazing content, how can it benefit them? If you actually showcase to any other transport company that you have saved them 80 million over the past one year, I'm sure they'll be more than happy to buy your services. 
So, because I think that's an amazing app that they have saved over 80 million over the past year. So go ahead, go full on out and um, pitch to all the training uh, transport companies that you have and maybe any other industries that might benefit from your app. I think that what you have is really amazing and you should go all out and because not all companies are going to do that to you they would understand that you are a proper business and they, that they would actually have to pay you. So um, in terms of other companies, you don't really have to worry about them. In terms of the company that needs to pay you, perhaps you can send them an invoice or um, you know, go out and have a face-to-face -face meeting with them in terms of the payment. Um, I, I do hope I, I actually, if you, if there is more information that I can actually help you with Melissa, do feel free to email and I will definitely reply to you uh, in terms of handling, um, handling other companies in payment terms. And let's see, um, Hasna, where can I get web analytics? Are there recommended apps? Yes, there is quite a number of recommended apps. What I will do is actually I will uh, email it out to uh, WIEF and then they will send it out to you, maybe the, all of you so that you can actually, um, you will be able to actually um, use all the apps. There's a lot of apps, there's a lot of websites that you can actually get web analytics from. Um, Google Analytics is one of the best that you can use that I have used personally. Uh, analytics in terms of social media, usually most of the social media already have the analytics, but there's a lot of other websites that will help you with analytics as well. So first of course, you can use Google Analytics for your website. Um, you can actually use uh, the social media on itself, the analytics on how it's doing. That's one way, uh, but I'll send you guys uh, more apps and more websites that you can actually use on in terms of web analytics. All right. Um, do you have any other questions? Any questions in terms of uh, the topic that we've spoken about today? In terms of content, are you stuck with content ideas? Um, bear in mind, content is no longer about... Uh, I just want you to keep in mind that it's not all about... Um, Content is not about your business most of the time. It's not about the products. It's not about the services. It's all about making people understand you as a human. And they need to have the sense of empathy. They need to have the passion. They need to feel the passion out from you so they can actually fall in love with your product. They can fall in love with your services. So again, when it comes to content, think of it as the 80-20 again. I can't stop uh, mentioning this 80-20. 20% of the time is about about the products, about the services, about discounts, about the sales, about everything else uh, relating to your business. And 80% of the time, it's all about lifestyle, value, educating them, um, and then showcasing who your employees are, who the behind the scenes are, what, how can they actually win, that, uh, win your customers over. All right. Um, any other questions? Okay, so uh, we have one question from Risky um, from Indonesia. Okay, so you sell craft products on Instagram and try to create content that focuses on pro the products you sell. Instagram try to create content that focuses on products you sell. However, it's turned out that the number of new followers added was very low because the articles I posted were only able to reach regular customers. What do I need to do so I can get new customers? Should I make a different post? Okay, amazing question. Um, risky. Okay, number first thing you want to do is post often. For Instagram, you want to post often, as often as possible. So maybe if you can post it three times a day, five times a day, do it. Next thing you want to do, as many Instagram stories as possible. Um, 10 stories, actually the minimum should be 10 stories a day, right? 10 stories on Instagram, post about three or four times if can, five times a day. Um, play around with your filters, play around with the hashtags. Now, these are very important. You want to use a maximum and minimum, right? The maximum and minimum is 30 hashtags. So how do you play with the hashtags? It's very simple. 
start off with the most generic hashtag. So it can be, for example, even if it's in my industry, uh, I don't know what craft products you sell. So um, if it's from the marketing industry, what I would do is hashtag marketing, content marketing, Facebook, Instagram, all the, the social media platforms, uh, advertising, hashtag advertising, hashtag social media, all those generic hashtags followed by um, company related hashtags. So it could be, uh, finally, I will hashtag um, my company name, uh, which is ATAC International, hashtag ATAC International, hashtag ATI, uh, hashtag, um, then finally, I hashtag my name, which is Angeline Samuel, and then finally, move on and uh, forward. So the last one will actually be the most niche. So what you can do is, of course, start with the generic and move on to the most niche. So start with uh, your craft products, the most, what is the most understanding, uh, understandable keywords of your craft product, and then move on to your company name finally, and perhaps even your name, uh, Risky Hapsari. So, and don't forget to hashtag your country as well, your country, your state, hashtag Indonesia, maybe you want to go, uh, you want actually to have consumers from a different country, you can hashtag Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, everywhere. So hashtag countries as well, and also geotech. Geotech is very important. Put your location there as well. So people around that uh, area will be able to see that you're selling crafts from that particular location as well. So make sure your geotag it, hashtag it is so important. That's the only way you can actually get it out there and you can get more followers. So number one, minimum of three to five posts a day. Um, play around, be fun, be entertaining. Uh, don't always talk about just your products. So it's all about lifestyle, results, and value, followed by the uh, followed by the hashtags. Make sure your caption is interesting. Hashtag 30 hashtags. Don't forget generic hashtags, country hashtags, and then finally is your own hashtag, your company's name and your name, all right? And that is how you actually um, get the Instagram followers, okay? And also 10 Instagram stories a day. So Instagram story, all your... Uh, all kinds of your products, where you are, who you are. Let people follow your lifestyle a little bit so they know who's risky, who's the person behind the product. So have fun with it. Uh, and eventually you will see that you, your number of followers will grow. So play around with it. But again, consistency is the key. And don't forget to hashtag and geotag the locations. So uh, have fun with it. I hope I have answered your question, um, Risky. All right. And then we have... Okay, so then we have do uh, from Ivy. Do you use some sort of content calendar to track your contents and recycle them later? Yes, actually I do. So what I do, I'm going to do is actually um, on Wednesday I'll be giving out a content calendar with a content guide as in a PDF ebook. So if you're joining on Wednesday, I will be definitely giving out a 30-page ebook. Uh, that is how to actually create content, what are the content ideas, that, how you can actually generate content ideas, and as well how to create a content calendar. So um, I hope you do join on the uh, Wednesday because I'm going to give out ebooks on Wednesday. So uh, join in, you will have a 30 page ebook. It's quite heavy. You will, one of the things that it covers is how to create a brand story, how to actually understand your demographics of, the, um, of your consumers, of your clients, how to create. Uh, your your brand, right? How to create your brand, understanding your own brand as well as um, how to create a content calendar. So I hope you join on Wednesday. I will definitely be giving it out. Okay. Um, next up, we have what are the best social media platforms you recommend for service organization? Um, can I know what service is it? Okay. Uh, Hasna. Service organization um, in service organization, I, I'm not sure what industry you are in. Okay, education. So if education, you would definitely want to use LinkedIn, you want to use Facebook, you want to use Instagram and YouTube. At the minimum, this four. But this, of course, you can actually go towards TikTok, you can go towards uh, uh, Twitter. There's a lot of variation of it. But Hasna, can I know which country are you from? I might be able to tell you what other... Sri Lanka, all right. So Sri Lanka, you probably want to go towards uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, 
and uh, LinkedIn if you want to actually capture the international market as well. Um, and let's see. So, mm, next question. Do we have any other questions? So we have um, Mr. Zakir. Uh, you're running a production house, all right. Okay. Do we have any questions that you would like me to answer? When it comes to community building, is Facebook group the best place to do that? Um, yes, it is actually for Facebook group. You, you By community building, you can actually, uh, I don't want you to just think of Facebook group. You want to build the community in your business page. You want to build your community in your Instagram page, on your YouTube page. By sense of community, I want you to actually create engagement. Um, answering to their comments and uh creating polls, asking them questions, asking them their thoughts. So uh, you want to build a community that way so that no matter what platform your consumer use, they would actually fall in love with your product. They fall in love with the way you handle them, the way you treat them, how much attention you pay to them, and how much information that you have available. So go crazy in all the social media platforms. Create, uh, your, create a community in all social media platforms, you know. You want to have that sense of community. So you want to do it in, in your comment session in Instagram. You want to do it in your live session. You want to have that community in your YouTube as well, where they're commenting and talking about your products and your services, about you, your, I mean, about the, perhaps the owner of the company itself as well. Okay, if you are selling children, so uh, I hope I answered your question in terms of building a community. Um, and Hasna, if you're selling, you're selling children's storybooks, what strategies can we use? Is putting parts of the book a good idea? Okay, all right. So I guess you're actually asking me what kind of content can you create, all right. So um, what you can do is actually uh, create events. One is you can create events and you can showcase perhaps, um, you know, a reading session or with, uh, with the parents or particularly the author itself or you yourself can actually read it uh, and you know uh, have a reading session uh, make a video out of it that's one you can actually what you can do is yes putting parts of the book is a good idea but I don't think you can you don't need to actually take a picture of it what you can do is actually read it out to them like you know uh, make them curious make them want to uh, listen more so read a little bit part until they are a bit curious and then Stop it right there so they can actually buy the book. Um, and then you want to take pictures. You want to showcase a little bit of the illustration. Um, you want to talk about the author itself. You want to, uh, you know, ask them what story they want to hear next. What books would they like to read uh, according to the age group? Ask the parents. If it's kids, children, right? Ask the parents. Create a community with the parents. Ask them what would they like to see next? What kind, what kind of book would they want to buy for their children? Um, and then ask them what do they think about the current book that you're selling? And, you know, if, if it's a wide range, which is their favorite, perhaps. Um, and then you can, you can read uh, the stories a little bit here and there, snippets of you on maybe every week once, uh, a little bit of stories here and there. Uh, showcase the book, how it looks like. Take pictures of the books in different corners of the house or um, of your studio or of your office. Um, take pictures of kids reading it, videos of kids reading it, videos of you reading it. Uh, use a lot of videos, play with it, have fun with it, think out of the box with it. Uh, get famous people, influencers to read it, um, you know, people, moms out there. Uh, so create a sense of community, uh, add value to them. Like, uh, you know, don't just talk about the books, ask them more questions, like ask them parenting questions, ask them, um, you know, like, uh, questions about uh, case studies or I mean like perhaps in terms of kids right um, like 
depending on the age group, how do you handle a particular uh, problem or what kind of uh, problems do you face with kids this age? You know, you can create a diet, not just to sell a storybook, but you want to create a sense of community. So they feel like they are right at home in your business page and they're not just able to talk about the stories, but you get a lot more parents that eventually will become your customers. So even if they don't own your books yet, they would become your customers. So you want to create the sense of engagement there um, and have fun with it, you know, cater to, cater to all their needs, cater to all aspects as a parent, as a kid. So have a lot of events, have a reading session, uh, you know, get them to come in and look at the books. So you can have a variety of different kinds of events, a variety of different kinds of content, play around with it. And again, you can actually dive, uh, go, I mean, go away from the stories itself and just focus on the kids and uh, parents. And that will actually make them want to buy the, um, want to buy your products and services because they feel that you are a person that adds value to them. So that is how you actually win them over, where you win a large audience over. So have fun with it, play with it, uh, use all kinds of social media. So use Instagram, use Facebook, use everything. So you get to have audiences from around the world um, and create a sense of community. Let people around the world talk about your product, talk about your services as well. I hope I answered your question, Hasna. All right. Now, um, next we have Mr. Zakir. Um, you're running a company with uh, which uh, core business is providing services such as web development for businesses, videography, and so forth. We are moving towards consolidating our services as a digital transformation company. However, in the area of developing digital content for types of service, service which is non-product based, do you have any advice, ideas that we may kickstart? Okay. Um, okay. When it comes to digital transformation, it's all about education. So educate your audiences, create awareness, create uh, awareness about your brand, create awareness about um, your business, web development. Why should they develop a website? Why should they have a website? What's the importance of a website? Um, and then videography. Why should they have a corporate video? Um, what kind of videos can you make? And what are the services that you have? And, and create questions around that, the services that you have and educate them. So if you're going to make a corporate video, why should they have a corporate video? How long does a corporate video take? What makes an amazing corporate video? Educate them. So when they come to you, they will come to you and they'll ask you, once you create a, a content on why should you have a corporate video and the elements, say for example, one more uh, video would be um, the important elements of having a corporate in important elements that you should have in a corporate video, then they will actually ask you a question, which is, um, how much is it to do a corporate video with you? Um, okay, so when they come to you and they say that, okay, I want a corporate video now, and they have already educated enough in the information that you gave on why they should get a corporate video and how the style of the corporate video that they want. So basically, you're educating them to come to you for business and at the same time, making your, your easier for them, easier for you and for them to actually come and engage with you because they wouldn't, without um, education, without awareness, they wouldn't come to you. So you need to educate them. You need to uh, show why are you different? What is different with your web development compared to another person's web development? Why should they have a website? What kind of business should have a website? Um, maybe you have a particular industry that you're really good at. So you can talk about that. And then if you're having an FMB uh, website, what are the main elements that you should have in an FMB website? You know, like menu, contact details. So you can actually make a video of um, what should be in a, FMB website. So play around with it, create so much content about awareness because in terms of digital transformation, it's all about educating them. Because the more you educate them, the more you answer their questions. Number one question is, they don't know what you do. A lot of business don't know what you do. You are the master in your industry. So people don't know what you do and you want to educate them. You want to educate all industries and all businesses to have a website, for example. And why should they have an example? And then you go by industry by industry. Why the industry should have a business? And if they are going, why should they have a website? Uh, I mean, website for their business. And if they already have a website for their business, what elements should be inside the business? Perhaps they should come to you and update their website. So why? Because maybe they're missing some of the important elements or making them a successful website. And maybe they are not, uh, they have not integrated the social media to your website. And if you're a content development company, 
why should they come to you in terms of developing content? What content can you create? Why is it so important to create content? What do they benefit that they get out of creating content? So it's all about you educating them in terms of digital transformation. So uh, that is how you actually gain consumers. That's one. And that's how you should start uh, moving towards you. It's not so much of um, buy the service for this price or it's discounted. It's all about educating them because most of the time, again, people make decisions according to emotions, even if it's in business. So if you're able to educate them, they would come to you, you because they feel that they're connected to you, they trust you and you have enough education that they trust that, okay, this person knows what they're talking about and they'll come to you and they get the services from you. And they would have, they would be more comfortable and empathetic to towards you in terms of they won't come back to you, especially when if that web development, they'll come back to you over hundred times over design, right? So that would actually reduce. So educate them in terms of digital transformation. Um, yes. All right. So I hope that helped you, uh, Zakir. If there's any other questions, please feel free to us, yes. Uh, the key is to educate them because in terms of digital transformation, I'm aware that most of the countries that I've trained in is that they are not aware of the products and services they have. I have had questions from huge uh, MNCs that what's the purpose of a website? Why should I have a website? Why should I have a social media site? Why should I have a corporate page? Uh, but if I have a website, okay, they get to find the information, but what is it for? What do I get benefit out of it? And what are people going to, uh, what should people, what should be inside a website, for example? So the key is to educate in terms of digital transformation or anything relating to IT or marketing or advertising. It's all about educating them. It's all about teaching them and avoid jargons at all costs. Don't use jargons because you're going to go on multi industries. So they don't understand uh, marketing and advertising jargon. So avoid jargons at all costs. And apart from that, have fun, create content in all about educating them. Again, by in mind, 20% of the time is where you actually only talk about your uh, sales, your, I mean, the sale, the discount, the service, and the, um, the service, and also the uh, product. But 80% of the time, you want to spend on educating them, showcasing them, the lifestyle, like with the results, for example, having a website, what's the results of it? So have fun with it, play with it, um, you know? So if you need anything, uh, if you have any other questions, please feel free to email and I will definitely answer your questions. All right. So I hope I answered your question, Zake. Anyone else have any questions that I can answer for you? I'll be more than happy to answer. Any questions on content, contacts, or branding story? Oh, please do attend the Wednesday because it's all about creating a brand story. So you would actually understand the demographics of your consumers. You would learn how to create a story for your brand, um, as well as you actually get to it's it. You get an ebook as well where you learn about content development, branding story, contacts. So. I hope you actually um, attend the session on Wednesday as well. Uh, yes, uh, for to connect with me, yes, that is actually my uh, company's Facebook page. But what you can do is actually uh, get in touch with me on LinkedIn as well, um, or either Facebook or Instagram. Not a problem. Is Angeline Samuel? So you can just look at Angeline Samuel and. I'll be there for you to answer any kind of questions, in, even in terms of uh, business related questions um, and in terms of content development or you're stuck on ideas on content, just feel free to ask me any questions. Or if you have any other questions that you want to ask and uh, that would actually help um, the rest of the participants, then you can actually ask me on Wednesday as well. Um, and if you have uh, any other questions, you also can email me, um, email WIEF or, and they will be able to give me the questions as well. So please feel free to uh, ask me any questions. Again, I'm Angeline Samuel, so you can actually look me up on social media or LinkedIn, and I'll be more than happy to ask, answer any of your questions.
Do you have any other questions? We have a few more minutes left that I can answer any of your questions. If you do have questions, please feel free to ask me. Okay, so if you don't have any questions, I just would like to remind you again, um, have fun with the content, um, have fun with the content, try out different variation of content, have many channels as possible, um, channels in terms of platforms for social media as possible, post every day, uh, have fun with it. Again, bear in mind they're humans behind the screens, they're not robots, so it, you want to actually be able to get connected with them. Um, so my email ID is Angeline Samuel. So please feel free to answer, uh, to actually just uh, send me a message there. So be, be able to, I'll be able to reply to you. Um, most of the time, my replying time is within 48 hours. So it is Angeline Samuel, A-N-G-E-L-I-N-E -E space S-A-M-U-E-L, Angeline Samuel. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram. I reply to a lot of business questions and I usually have a live session there as well. So if you want to watch, uh, watch that. Um, apart from that, thank you so much for um, your time. And I will hand over to Ina and I look forward to seeing you all on Wednesday. Thank you, Angeline and everybody for being here today and making this webinar a successful one. We hope that the workshop topic on contacts and content will benefit you greatly. Now, for a complete WBN I Empower workshop experience, please join part two of the workshop, uh, workshop on the 12th of August, uh, 2020 at 11am for in-depth discussion on brand, storytelling, some time uh, to complete the survey form we've prepared for you at the end of the session. Please also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter and YouTube for regular news and happenings. Now on behalf of WIEF Foundation, thank you for joining us today and have a great day ahead.